patience, when it's coupled with kindness and powered by love, will lead to glorious interruptions. It's all about love, right? Think about this verse. Jesus said, you shall love the Lord. He was a man came to him. What's said? What's the foremost command? And Jesus answered and said, "You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself." So the man that he's speaking this to, then says to him, "Okay, who's my neighbor?" And Jesus replied and said, "A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho." and fell among robbers, and they stripped him and beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. And by chance a priest was going down on that road. When he saw him, he passed by on the other side. I want to get involved in this. Likewise, a Levite also, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan who was on a journey came upon him, and when he saw him, felt compassion, and came to him and bandaged up his wounds, pouring oil and wine on them, and he put him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. On the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said, Take care of him, and whatever you, more you spend, when I return I will repay you. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell into the robber's hands? And he said, The one who showed mercy towards him. And Jesus said to him, Go and do the same. Now, you want to know something? If he had been too impatient, it says he was on a journey. He had a destination. He had a place he was going. All right? He was going to Jericho. He could have looked and said, oh, I, you know, I don't have time for this. I don't have time for this nonsense. i got a place. But he didn't. You have a story. I was just oh, thinking I, the same thing. <laughs> where you were, you passed a person on the side of the road before cell phones. It was a little old lady. Oh, yeah, yeah, that one. And yeah. you were on a sales exactly. call. That's right. Yes. You were on point. a sales call. And did you know the guy was a very precise and had oh, to be on time? I, yeah, what Mark's talking about is I was on my way. I was with somebody that worked for me, and I was on my way to a meeting with a Fortune 500 company, the vice president of a Fortune 500 company. And we kind of knew that if we stopped to help, there were two little old ladies. That if we stopped to help them, we were not going to make our appointment. And it was a big, big deal. But we chose to go and do the same. So we stopped and we helped and we were these little old ladies. And we wound up getting to our appointment about an hour late. Which meant there was no appointment. Which meant there would have been no this, appointment. This guy was a stickler for time. Well, this was well, back in the day in New York. Yeah, when you're dealing with a Fortune 500 company, when you're dealing with an executive vice president of a Fortune 500, yeah. you, don't, you show up an hour late for an appointment. You don't have an appointment. When you show up... Yeah. A but, late, yeah, you know, yeah. It really, that's the way it was in yeah. New York, absolutely. But we did what we knew God would want us to do. Uh, that, does that take patience? It, it takes, yes, it takes, it takes control to say, I'm not going to zoom off because I need to be there. So we stopped. It took trust. It absolutely it, it, does. Well, it does. All of this comes out of trust. Mm -hmm. And it comes out of trust that in God's love. That He is okay? in charge. He is in charge. Okay? That He is in charge. So we stopped. We helped these ladies, then we got back on the road. We got to our appointment an hour late. We went into the reception area in this beautiful big campus in the uh, suburbs of New York City. And the woman said, okay, I'll announce you to the president. We're, and the two of us are sitting there thinking, well, this is over and done. The man walked out, walked out of his office and into the reception area. And he came out just shaking his head and said, he said, I am so sorry. He said, I have never kept anybody waiting so long for them. <laughs> we, were, we were doing God's business, God was and God was taking care of our business. It's the idea, this is what happens when you trust that God is in control. And you do, this is what Jesus said, go do the same. This man's journey was interrupted. Yes. But it was a glorious interruption. That's right. It was a glorious interruption. That Samaritan had the patience to interrupt his journey and the kindness to care for the unfortunate man, the victim. Your journey can never be interrupted by a stop for kindness because kindness has always been your spirit-led destination. You have a ministry of reconciliation. You have a ministry of bringing the grace of God, into the presence of God into others' lives in every situation. That is your destination. 
The grocery store is not your destination. See, you know what that just made me think of is that people think that they have to, you know, they meet this person, they got to immediately start preaching the gospel to them, getting these words into them, and it's the actions that is the gospel. It's Jesus. It is the action, and it is bringing the presence of Christ Jesus into every place.